Salutations gentlemen and playboys alike. JT Tran here, bringing you another edition of Ask JT Tran, where I help you guys deal with matters of the heart. Whether it comes to picking up girls, having a relationship, or everything in between. So today I want to talk about something that is near and dear to my heart and basically affects every single guy in the world regardless of what your friends tell you and that is dealing with the fear, the approach anxiety when it comes to talking to a beautiful girl. We all feel it guys. Trust me, I feel it. Some of the greatest Casanovas in the world feel it. But dealing with approach anxiety is something that every guy has to go through, especially if you want the woman of your dreams. Because you don't want to simply settle for that one girl that you have no choice with. You want to have an array of options, of quality options, so that you can finally choose the woman that you're meant to be with as opposed to settling. And so the first step that every guy has to deal with is that not in your stomach, that fear, you know, that feeling when you start to sweat, your palm starts to sweat, you got butterflies in your stomach, your testicles try to draw up into your body, that kind of approach anxiety, that fear. So let's examine approach anxiety from a top level, okay? Approach anxiety is a fear that is taught. It is a form of social conditioning, which is especially true for us Asians because we have a lot of pressures, both internal and external, that make us try to conform to a certain type of behavior. Now, if you think about it, there are really, from an evolutionary you know, biology point of view, there are only really two types of fears that we are born or we are biologically programmed for, and that is the fear of loud noises, right? And the fear of falling down, coming back from our, you know, the days when our ancestry was like monkeys and we're here in the trees. It's this fear of loud noises and the fear of falling. If you think about it, when we were kids, all right, you went to kindergarten or whatnot, were you like telling your mommy like, no, I don't want to talk to that girl, she's scary. No, like when you went on a play date, you wanted to play with other kids, whether they're girls or whether they're guys, it didn't matter. It didn't matter the race, because when you're kids, you don't have all that burden of social conditioning. So we've been conditioned. So that's one thing you have to understand is someone taught you this form of behavior, this negative limiting belief. And it all boils down to one feeling, and especially true for all of us Asians, because it's part of our culture, but it is just one feeling, okay? And that is shame. The feeling of shame. It is shameful to talk to girls. It is shameful to express our romantic interests. It is shameful to want to be with somebody and to approach her in some sort of social setting where we believe that everybody is looking at us and they're judging us. They're like, oh my God, what is that Asian guy doing talking to that girl? She's, he's going to bring dishonor on our entire family and our, our, our clan and our house, right? Or we're judging like, you know, white girls don't like Asian guys because we have small penises and that's what the media says. It's all based on shame, all right? We've been taught to be ashamed of ourselves, whether it's to be ashamed of ourselves as men or to be ashamed of ourselves as Asians, all right? So we've got to fight that, all right? And the real solution to approaching anxiety is very simple, and that is just to approach. Now, there's a lot more to that <laughs> than, uh, than just approaching, and I'm gonna go into that, but really that is the key. Approach, approach, and approach, all right? But let me tell you first my story, my first real approach when it came to talking to girls. I was with Mystery and we went to Sata Ranch, right? And he tells me, and he looks over to this, these five set of girls, and for those of you who've never been to Santa Ranch, it's a very kind of hostile environment and target rich. When I say hostile, I don't mean like guys are trying to beat you up or anything like that, but it is full of Hollywood hipsters, right? These SoCal, California girls from like UCLA, they're kind of like sorority girls, and then you got the frat boy, you know, with like no necks. And so Mystery points out this five set, and he says, okay, you see that five set over there? I want you to go talk to them. I'm like, what? Yeah, you because know? this is the first time I've been ever 
intentionally approached a person with the desire to introduce myself and maybe get a number, maybe express some sort of romantic interest. I had never done that, all right? All my relationships, all the girls that I've ever been with, which to that point was like one, right? Had to be been by accident or been through a very indirect route. So I'd never done this. I'd never thought I could take control over my ability to approach and introduce myself. So mystery says, you know, over there, in that, you know, over there by the bar, there are five people, four sorority girls, right? And one steroid, you know, no neck frat boy. And I'm like, okay. And this was back in the day when it's all very much indirect openers with indirect body language. And I march over there, right? And I could just start to feel myself sweat. <laughs> like my palms are sweating. And I go there and I do like, over my shoulder, you know, right? The indirect body language, you're not to express interest. I'm like, hey, hey guys. And then like in high school, my voice cracks, right? As if I was going through puberty or get like, hey girls. Like, they all look at me and I'm like starting to sweat bullets at this point. And I say, who do you think lies more, men or women? And there's this pregnant pause. Right? You could hear the sound of a pin drop. Everybody looks at me. And then one of them opens their mouth, and one by one, they actually say something. One says, girls. One says, guys. And even the guy friend that was in the group said, oh, I think girls like more. And I was like, all right, thanks, bye. And I just kept on walking. So that was my first set, all right? Completely nothing to be proud of. But from that point, I realized I can take control of this. That this is not something that I have absolutely no ability to control, right? And so it suddenly became like a superpower to me. All right, so now that we've talked about what approach anxiety is, let's talk about how to deal with it. Again, let me discuss a little bit more of the top level before I get down into the nitty gritty exercises that will help you deal with approach anxiety. So from a psychological and therapeutic point of view, there are two things that psychologists will recommend when it comes to dealing with your fears and your phobias. First, there's immersion therapy and then there is flooding therapy. Immersion therapy is a psychological technique which allows patients to overcome their fears through a process of first creating a fear hierarchy. All right? You're asked a series of questions ranging from small to terrifying of what you consider scary. So let's say you are talking about girls, that's your fear. And the psychologist would ask you, all right, would being in the same room with a girl be scary? All right, then you'd be like, he would ask, okay, would being 10 feet away from a girl, would that be scary? And would be, Standing three feet away from a girl, would that be scary? Would shaking hands with a girl be scary? Would saying hello to a girl be scary? All the way up to like asking her out on a date, holding her hand, kissing her, you know, creating a fear hierarchy. On a scale of one to 10, how terrified are you of these things? So some guys like being in the same room with a girl will make them sweat bullets, while other guys, it's more, let's say, pulling the trigger when it actually comes time to, you know, opening his mouth and saying some words. So once you have that fear hockey out of the way, you're going to be taught some relaxation exercises to get you calmed down, to put you, I guess, using pickup terminology, to put you in state. So you're taught these relaxation exercises, and then you're actually exposed to that stimuli until you go from being in the same room with her, walking up to her, talking to her, and it's shown that immersion therapy is effective. However, and this is a big one, the downside is that this takes a very long time. You know, my boot camps are like a weekend and our students usually get over their fear of women like in a night. Immersion therapy might take you ages. It is effective, they've done studies on this, but it's not something that will happen overnight or even like over a weekend. It could take you months. And for those of us 
like me who kissed my first girl at the age of 20 and I didn't really start to meet girls and date around until I was like 24, 25, I don't really have a lot of time to waste. And I suspect you guys don't either. You want this problem solved and you want it solved now. So the other form of therapy is called flooding. And as the name suggests, flooding is when you are flooded with your phobia and the stimulus that you consider scary. So in this case, is talking to girls. Psychiatrist Joseph Wolpe demonstrated an example of flooding that was determined to be effective. He had this patient, a female, who was completely terrified of driving in a car, like to the point where she would start screaming. And what he actually did was he put her in the passenger seat and they drove around. And in the beginning, terrified, screaming her head off. But over the course of however many minutes to hours, she realized nothing bad was gonna happen. And she went from being completely hysterical to being you know, scared, to being uncomfortable, and then to realizing, hey, this is not a big deal. So flooding therapy is the basis of her boot camps, where you are exposed to talking to girls to the point where you realize the fear of talking to girls is not that bad. It's not something that you should be scared of. But more than that, with our instructors who are giving you not only feedback and critique, we're actually there to hold your hand through these interactions, all right? To push you, to be in set with you, to basically smooth over any bumps. So all you have to worry about is talking to her, not any kind of guys or any kind of anything like else like that. But anyways, I'm digressing. So those are the two types of therapies that have been determined to be effective when it comes to dealing with social phobias like that. So let's talk about getting you ready for talking to a beautiful girl. I think of this as priming your inner game or your attitude you might be familiar with in the ABCDF system. Or you might call this as pre-state, priming your pre-state. So first, is exercise, incredibly important because not only does exercising create endorphins and mimics antidepressants, but it reduces stress, creates new brain cells. It's just basically really good for you to start exercising. And there's so much far reaching effects like making you look good over the long term, giving you energy, so start exercising. Second is getting good sleep. Did you guys know that getting an hour of extra sleep every day is worth more to your happiness than making an extra $60,000. It reduces stress, reduces anxiety, gives you energy. So try to get good sleep. The third is coloration, all right? Your fashion, in other words. Think of it as armoring up for battle, so to speak, or suiting up. As they say, a suit on a man is like lingerie to a woman. So there are certain colors like yellow and red that speak of you as being energetic, confident, and outgoing. Red is especially a very good color when it comes to meeting people. Four, get outside, all right? Plan your day to include, you know, 20 minutes of going outside, whether it's day game or just exercising and being out in nature. The sun will make you feel so much better. You don't want to stay home and, you know, play video games and you don't always want to go necessarily to like the nightclubs and bars all the time. Go outside 20 minutes every day and it'll start making you relieve yourself of a lot of the anxiety and stresses so that you can get your pre-state warmed up. And the final step to getting your pre-state ready is planning, all right? Actually write down your plan because when you write something down, you're more likely to accomplish your goal than if you simply wish upon a star and say, ah, you know, I hope this happens. So by actually writing it down, not only are you mentally going through the process and making your future mental steps inside your mind, you're holding yourself more accountable. And it doesn't matter if the path that you follow is exactly what you wrote down. What's really important is that you actually go through the process of holding yourself accountable and trying. So I actually write it down, like write down where you're gonna go, maybe what kind of opener you might use, what kind of conversation that you might you know, have, what kind of stories. And again, be prepared to throw it out the window but actually make a plan. So those are ways to get in your pre-state ready. So what are the approaching anxieties that you can actually do once you're there in the club? So 
Here are some approach anxiety exercises and drills that you guys can do. So as they say, your thoughts are your actions. And I know when you're out there, you're getting nervous and that's okay. So I want you to say this to yourself as that butterfly starts to roll around in your stomach and you start to sweat. Literally say, I am not nervous, I am excited. Yes, it's a mental affirmation, but what you'll see with some of these drills and some of these exercises you can do is some of them are very effective and some of them aren't really effective and they all really depend upon you individually. One size does not fit all and not all these exercises are going to help everybody. But say this, and what's the harm in saying it? I am not nervous, I'm excited. All right? You're slowly trying to change the way you think when it comes to talking to girls. Which comes to my next point, which is the pain and pleasure principle. People are more likely to try to spend energy avoiding pain than they are to seeking pleasure because talking to beautiful girls should be a wonderful thing, but somewhere down the line, like you talk about social conditioning, we've been taught that talking to beautiful girls is bad, it's shameful. So what you're gonna do is you're going to play a game, all right? This is like what I call the approach anxiety potluck. So you are for wingman and you all throw down money, okay? So let's say you give your buddy a hundred bucks and you say, hey, give me $10 for every set that I approach. If I don't approach all 10, then you get to keep that money. So it's basically like a win-win for both of you. You're encouraged to talk to as many girls as possible to get your money back and he is encouraged to go out and wing with you because he probably wants like you know that money too or better yet he wants a good wingman following along that line that train of thought is when you see a beautiful girl and you and your buddy are discussing who's going to approach don't be the guy be like dude you, you go approach her no you, you you go approach her i think she's checking you out all right basically winners win and what I'll do with my buddies is we might do something like paper, rock, scissors, right? One, two, three, throw. And whoever wins paper, rock, scissors is the one that goes in. He has first choice as to which girl that he's interested in talking to. And the wee man then comes in and talks to the other girl, all right? Winners have first dibs. They are the ones that get to choose who they want to talk to. And in that way, everybody's encouraged to win. Another thing that you can do is having a prepared opener and just practicing it beforehand, before you even talk to girls. It's just having whatever opener. And then when you actually go there, again, you don't have to stick to it but at least you're mentally prepared to vocalize. You've gotten like your vocal cords warmed up. It's just like going to the gym. Just you gotta warm up those muscles before you actually can do the big weights. Another thing you can do to help you deal with approach anxiety is knowing what you're going to say after. Whether that's having routines, you know, which is nothing shameful. If you need them, whatever. They're good training rules. But better yet is practicing the ability to improvise, to having spontaneous and genuine conversation, like picking a word out of a dictionary and making a story based on that word from your own life. So that way you can open and then you can just talk. Again, these are things you can do getting yourself ready. So what are some other things that you can do while you're there? Well, the obvious solution that pretty much every guy uses around the world is drinking. Now that I'm saying that you guys should drink, but I mean, you're adults here, all right? At least I hope you're an adult if you're watching this video. And um, alcohol has been a social lubricant that's been around for thousands of years. I'm you know, not here to reinvent the wheel. But you don't want to get sloppy drunk if you are going to drink. All right, I'm going to treat you like an adult. If you want to drink, drink. But don't get sloppy. Don't get messy because you want to be able not to use alcohol as a crutch. I've had some of my trainers that went an entire year without drinking and it was a learning experience, right? But again, you know what? One or two beers, it's fine. It's not a big deal. But don't get sloppy drunk for a lot of different reasons from DUIs to, you know, having whiskey dick. Don't get too drunk, all right? Don't make it a crutch. Another thing you can do to get your approach anxiety under control is using hired guns as a warm up, all right? From 10 to 11, talk to the bouncers, talk to the promoters, talk to the waitresses, talk to the bartenders. Just get your vocal cords warmed up. Just talk to them. I mean, they have to talk to you. Maybe it's just something as simple as you're new in town and you don't know where to go, where would they recommend? And then you just talk about where you've been. You don't want to stay in that topic 
topic. The idea is just to talk and just to talk and just to talk. And you get additional benefits because they might recognize you the next time around and you might get like social proof. They let you in line through the club, they get you an extra drink, anything like that. All right, so warm up with the higher guns. Another thing you can do is use props. So sort of a physical prop when it comes to introducing yourself to girls. And I don't mean like feather boa or a big fluffy hat kind of prop. I mean, let's say you're hired to be someone that passes out flyers for a promoter or cards or anything like that, right? You can use that card or a flyer as a way to introduce yourself. It gives you a reasonable excuse to talk to somebody in a socially acceptable manner, right? Because at this point, you're probably still dealing with fighting that social conditioning that's been imposed on you. So having some sort of physical prop can help. Another good way to deal with approach anxiety is talking to other dudes, right? You're not hitting on them, you're just talking to other dudes. And all you really do is like, you talk about your war stories, right? You talk about sports, you talk about this and that, it's not a big deal. You just introduce yourself and we talk because if guys are gonna be at the bar, a lot of times they're not talking to girls because they're too scared. So they're gonna be grateful that someone is talking to them. And again, you're just making polite chit chat. You're talking guys speak sports, you know, the news, things of that manner, like the girls that are there, right? Just guy talk. And another thing you can do is exercise. And now, I know we've already talked about exercise as a part of your pre-state, but you can actually do it when it comes to approaching. All right, for example, what William would do, whose wedding, if you remember, I officiated in New York, he would actually go to the gym like an hour before going out to the bars and clubs, and then actually at the bar or club, if he hesitated or if one of his students would hesitate, he would do 10 push-ups right then and there. And by getting your adrenaline pumping, by getting you excited, it puts you into a better state for you to actually go out there and take charge so that you're not all inside your head, you're actually in the moment physically and emotionally instead of being you know, analysis paralysis. And finally, really one of the best ways to get over approach anxiety is just having a good wingman. Now, I've talked a little bit about the strategies before that needed a wingman, but just having a really good wingman will help immensely, all right? You wanna be like at each other's level, maybe you know he can be like a level higher than you, but the idea is you're both pushing each other, and he should not only be your wingman, but your friend as well, so that you're both in invested into each other's progress. Because you can't really calibrate your approach by just observing yourself and by doing it alone. That would be like, you know, putting a tattoo on yourself. You can't calibrate your own approach if you're just doing it by yourself. So having a good wingman is essential. Now, to get a good wingman, um, you want to, you know, put yourself out there to talk to guys and to give value, especially if he's better than you. When I was going out and I was trying to find a good wingman, I auditioned like three to four dozen guys and I realized I was basically better than like 90% of them. It wasn't because I was doing anything special other than the fact that I was going out there and approaching, even though I was just riddled with fear, I didn't let that hold me back. And what I found was that these 10% of guys, I would offer value. I would treat them to lunch or dinner or buy them a drink so that it wasn't just me seeking their help constantly. You want to provide value so that when you're out at night and he says, go talk to that girl, he's investing into your progress and he's always pushing you to succeed. So having a good wingman helps a lot. Now obviously, some of you guys might not have a wingman because you might live in a small city well, for whatever reason. Solo gaming is obviously a little bit more difficult but there are the tips that I talked about before, right? Talking to guys, when you're talking to other dudes, you're not thinking about picking up, you're just talking, you're just socializing, talking to hired guns, again, warming up, right? All good rays, good exercises for you to chip away at that wall of shame of approach anxiety, all right? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There will be more to come from confidence to talking to girls, to relationships, to sex, to race. So be sure to subscribe, all right? And I'll see you next time. 
Hey there, thanks for watching our video. I hope you liked it. And make sure you guys subscribe to this channel and watch all our other videos. Great news too. Every Monday, we'll be putting out a new weekly video. That's right, we've got educational seminars, street interviews, uh, fun infield pickup videos, and anything else we can come up with that's fun for you guys to watch. So check back for that every Monday. Oh, and if that's not enough for you, remember that for the last 10 years, the ABCs of Attraction have been the finishing school for Asian gentlemen. So we've been teaching guys how to be better boyfriends, more confident, and better husbands. If you need that extra push, you can enroll in one of our classes. But until then, we'll see you every Monday. Bye.